What's up team, it is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this session we're talking about why understanding technology is important. Not necessarily learning to code, you can learn to code if you want, but at the very, very least, you should understand technology, and here is exactly why. Let's get to it, team. All right, team, it is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. In this video, we're talking about why understanding technology is important to each and every individual on this planet right now. We are moving in a direction and there is there is no way any of this is going to turn around unless some huge catastrophe happens and then we're back in the Stone Age and nobody wants to be there. So this is this is the, the, the state of things is we are moving more and more into an automated society. Eventually, we are going to have robots that are able to do things and learn while they're doing those things so they get better at those things and eventually they'll be able to do a majority of the things that we are able to do as human beings but before we get there I want to talk about something that is very important and that is how technology is being used right now and how people are being manipulated by technology and they don't even know they don't even understand and one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because of this right here the deal is is we have a comedian Dave Chappelle. Almost everybody I've ever I've ever met, I've ever talked to knows who Dave Chappelle is. There are people who know who Dave Chappelle is and they don't know who the mayor of their their town is. I'm one of those people. I I I know what he, I know what the mayor looks like, but I don't know his name, I don't know his policies, I don't know anything about this guy, but I know I know all about Dave Chappelle. Let's let's just step away from that for a second and talk about what's going on in the in the media right now. There in in every major news outlet that I have seen, there is there is people don't like what what Dave Chappelle's latest comedy show was, right? The things he talked about, they that people are saying they found them offensive and all this other stuff, and and that's that's possible, right? We all have our own opinions. I'm sure there's plenty of people who found what Dave Chappelle said to be offensive. The thing is that in the mainstream media, right, you would think that only oh uh, that you would you would think that nobody liked his show because it was just so offensive. What what made me want to record this video is I saw, an, I was watching another video and they showed a, a screenshot from Rotten Tomatoes. And on Rotten Tomatoes, Dave Chappelle, his, his rating from Rotten Tomatoes is 17%. So this means of all of the people, like the, the professional raters there, if there's such a thing, they all watched this and only 17% of them liked what Dave Chappelle's newest comedy show was. But on the other side, you have the audience, and the audience is 99%. So this is 99 out of every 100 people that watched this show liked it. Very few people had bad things to say, but then you go to the critic side, and right, 17% of the people liked it, and mo the majority of the people have bad things to say. Now, it doesn't matter if you like Dave Chappelle or not, or if you're into politics or not, or if you're into whatever or not. Here's the deal. As we move further and further, deeper and deeper into this technological society, we are giving other people control, control of information. There are some people out there who, for whatever reason, don't want us to learn certain things. Some people are going to be like, hey, man, this guy is on like some whole conspiracy theory craziness. Let's think. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. Very few people have anything good to say about the education system in the United States. Yet we all send our kids to school and there is plenty of options for us not to do that. We can homeschool our kids. We can send our kids to private school. We can hire a private tutor, a private teacher, whatever. Now, some people are going, oh, Cass, well, who can afford this stuff? Who can afford a private teacher, a private tutor? Who can afford to homeschool? Like, we have to go to work and we got bills to pay. We got all this stuff. We have to send our kids to school. That's what we believe. In actuality, we don't have to send our kids to school. Not not sending our kids to school, like say if we want to homeschool, is going to make our lives a little more difficult. Maybe a lot more difficult. If we want to send our kids to private school, it may make our lives a lot more difficult. There's tons of things that may make our lives a lot more difficult. But just because our lives become more difficult doesn't mean that that option is the lesser of two evils. Just because our lives become more difficult doesn't mean that that option is the lesser of two evils. Nobody has anything to say about school and we all send our kids to school. We all know that when you're in school, you're expected to, to get A's and, and rise up through the ranks and you graduate from high school and then you go off to college. Everybody goes, college debt is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. But 
we at the same time we're telling each other that hey in order for you to succeed in this world you have to go off to college despite all of the evidence to the contrary most most of the jobs on this planet don't require a college education even some of the jobs that did require a college education at some point at one point they don't require a college education now some of you out there you can recall a time when you were in school and typing was an actual class like you went to this class and you learned to type on a computer now nobody needs that class you don't need to learn to type on a computer because mo most people they have learned to type through some other mechanism and if you go off into a job right out of high school where you're where you're going into a, a place where you need to type, you don't have to go to school to learn to type. You can just go on to the Internet and type, learn to type. And there's millions of applications that will teach you how to type. And just from learning to type on the Internet and then going to work and typing every day, you can become a very, very fast typer. It's the same with anything else. You don't have to go to school to be a plumber. You don't have to go to school to be a programmer. You don't have to go to school to be a florist. You don't have to go to school to study history. You don't have to go to school to study anything. All the information that you need is out there. You can find it on the internet. You can find it at the library. Between those two places, you can find everything you need to learn anything and learn how to do anything. And also, we're coming into this age where people who are actually out there doing it or have done it or starting to produce content and we can go and we can watch these people and we can say how do I start a software company and we can go watch millions of videos made by people who have either started software companies or are in the process of starting software companies and we can learn from them and we can follow their path we can choose our teacher the reason why I'm talking about all this stuff is because as we go further into this digital society there are going to be people who want to control the narrative and we're going to be told that some things are bad because someone doesn't want us to know the truth about those things so we'll label this person evil we'll label this thing bad we'll say you shouldn't watch this we'll say you shouldn't do that and a lot of people They'll go, oh, well, you know, I read that this is terrible, so I'm not going to even read it. I read that this is bad, so I'm not going to even look at it. I read, And even though you have the interest, somebody else has put the thought in your head like, hey, this is terrible. Don't spend your time on it. You as an individual have to make that decision. And what I'm telling you is that everything that you see out here in the world isn't all the way 100% the truth. There's a little bit of truth here and a little bit of truth there and, and, and you put the truth together and you're able to, to draw your own conclusions. This is typically how it's been and how it's had to be and it's nothing, nothing's changed. It's just that we are being fed a lot of information. The information comes to us instead of us going to get it and we take that information at face value and we go off into the world and we do things that are in direct contradiction to the life we want to live and the things we want to do and the freedoms that we want to have and it's because somebody somewhere has told us hey this thing is not going to show you the way when all you have to do is really go take a look at it for yourself for instance right there's a lot of people out there who are like i'm not going to watch dave Chappelle's comedy show because everybody says is mega offensive but Maybe it would be more beneficial if you just watched it for yourself and found out and then you can make your own decision. And from there, when somebody asks, what do you think? You can say, I believe this is offensive. And if they say why, you can say, I watched it and I didn't I didn't I didn't agree with anything that he said. What's terrible is when somebody hasn't watched it and somebody goes, hey, have you seen this thing and say, no, I, I haven't seen it. It's, it's really offensive. And they go, why? Why do you believe it's offensive? And you say, well, because so and so and so and said it's offensive and so and so and so said it's offensive and so and so and so said it's offensive. And they go, hey, like, how much do you really trust these people? Like, would you trust them to watch your kids? Would you trust them to give you a job? Would you trust them to, to, rec to recommend you to, 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 to what, how, what, what, is the, what is the level of your trust in these individuals? And when you really think about it, the people who are telling you all this stuff that are telling you these things are bad, you don't really know them. You don't know anything about them. So why should you trust them at all? The only real person you can trust is yourself. And going forward in this technological world, you're gonna have to learn to trust yourself more and more. There's gonna be a lot of information that tells you that, the, that certain things are not possible. But if you're able to see beyond that and look out into the world for other information that 
either corroborates that or contradicts that, you'll find something completely different. Somebody said we couldn't go to the moon and then we went to the moon. Somebody said we can't have cars and now everybody has a car. There was a company, humongous company, I've talked about this before, who said nobody is ever going to want to use computers. This is not going to happen, right? There was news stories and news articles going, what, what would people use computers for? Why do you need to learn about computers? This is on the TV, on the news. People are asking, why would you want to use a computer? And this is like 20, 30 years ago. Now we're at a place where everybody's using computers. And the people who really listened to that stuff back then and were just like, hey, man, computers are a fad because so and so and so and so on the TV told me so, they were left behind. They could have made the next Facebook or the next Instagram or the next Microsoft or the next Google or the next whatever. But they didn't go down that path because they believe what somebody else told them. So going forward into the future team, just understand that technology is a fantastic tool, but it can be used for good and evil. And there are people out there who don't want you to know the truth about certain things because they have their own agenda. And the best way to make sure that you make decisions that are going to benefit you is to seek the information. Ask and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. All right, team, that is it for this one. I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And before we go, if you want to support the channel, head over to writecodedrinkcoffee.com where you can pick up a shirt like this or a hat like this. Head, or you can head over to the Code365 Startup Lab where I have some super basic, super simple courses that will introduce you to the technology that I guarantee you are using every day at some point in your everyday life. You are touching the internet which is composed of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you want to know how all that stuff is built and put together, check out the Code365 Startup Lab. And if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for a membership to Code365 Startup Lab. And inside of that membership, there's access to different courses that will teach you more and more about coding. And when you do have that fantastic idea that you don't believe is possible, you can go, hey, man, what if it was possible? And you can back up a little bit. And you can say, what is it that I need to learn to do this? It starts with the website. Code365 Startup Lab has got your team. So again, if you want to support the channel, Code365 Startup Lab to for courses and the rightcodedrinkcoffee.com website where you can get merch like this hat, this shirt, mugs, and stickers. Until next time, team, work hard, get out there, do what you got to do so you can live the life you want to live and do the things you want to do and become the person you want to become. All right. Let's roll. I don't know what I'm doing now, but I'm doing something.